But first, our top story, which takes us to Portland, Oregon, the home of Daimler Truck North America, as we bring in our Detroit Bureau Chief, Alan Adler. Morning, guys. Good morning, Alan. How are you this morning, my friend? I'm good. I'm I'm a little surprised, not that people are stealing these things, but that Daimler's talking about it. Uh, you know, it, it's interesting. You, you think about why would they want to put out a press release that they're going after the thieves of powertrain control modules? Well, for one thing, they want to get attention to this, right? I mean, they want people to know that it's going on. I think they want to uh, sort of, you know, tee up law enforcement and everybody else to recognize it and and probably to crack down on it. This this was a surprising sort of press release to see yesterday, I thought. And, uh, you know, we asked a few questions, got a little bit more detail on it, but basically it's around 175 trucks, which isn't which isn't huge unless you think that all of those 175 trucks are now effectively paperweights. Um, they're not going anywhere. So is it 175 trucks, are they 175 Daimler trucks? And what exactly, first of all, what exactly are they stealing? They're not stealing the whole powertrain. What are they stealing and why? Okay, so so what they're stealing is essentially called a powertrain control module. This is essentially what is the computer brains of the truck. Inside that powertrain control module are semiconductors, microchips, things like that. Daimler won't say how many, but essentially what they're doing is they're harvesting or, or taking apart these modules. They're, they're taking those semiconductors, reprogramming them, and then using them in other trucks, in other VIN numbers of trucks. Um, I don't know all the details of what's happening, but that's essentially the, the gist of it. So this is both uh, something relatively easy to take out if you have access to the truck, or a smash and grab works just as well. You can reach up underneath those wire harnesses and, and yank it out that way. And, and Daimler's seen both uh, situations. So, I mean, you could be literally a driver on on your brake in your tractor and somebody could come under under the tractor and just steal your module out from under you and then run off. That's kind of how or, it is. Or, or break in your window. Yeah, Thomas, exactly. I mean, yeah, there's a number of ways to do it. Brute force is, a, is effective as well as, you know, again, if you had access to the truck, you know, you could get in. And I'm not exactly sure how you access it, but I believe you got to go up under the dash to get it and uh, you know, if you know what you're looking for. Um, we did have a picture there of, of what it looks like. It's, a, it, it's a basically a small uh, piece of metal with a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, programming and coding on it. And uh, this is where we're at. Now, you know that the background of the whole thing is that we have such a shortage of semiconductors and uh, truck makers are red tagging trucks. They're building them almost to completion and then parking them until they get the chips that they need. Um, yeah. This is depressing. The new truck market, what, for months, almost a year now, in terms of the number of, of vehicles that can be sold, that affects the used truck market and has effectively doubled prices for good used trucks. So this is a big deal. It, it is. It's 175 so right now. So maybe they're trying to cut off a, a burgeoning new industry right in the black market. But uh, so who's, who's they're harvesting for the chips, right? And but you need the chips for the new trucks. Who's who's buying them? Is it Daimler's competitor that's uh, stealing these from? I mean, what, who's who's buying? These I things? hope not. I, I hope not. Although it's interesting, right. nobody else has answered my questions. Uh, I you know, Michael, there's a lot I don't know. I'm going to continue to follow this story, but I, yeah. I would tell you that. I would tell you that not unlike airbag thefts and, you know, catalyst thefts for, you know, precious metals that have occurred mostly in passenger cars, passenger right, vehicles, right, right, right. Um, this is the same kind of thing. I, I don't know if it's a cottage industry, but, you know, a lot of times, uh, you know, gangs are involved in this kind of stuff because they target a certain group of trucks. I mean, one example that Daimler gave was 24 trucks in Pennsylvania that were parked waiting for auction and every one of them got, got hit. So, you know, that sounds like an organized gotcha. thing, right? And yeah. then you know, if you're at, if you're at, uh, you know, a, a truck stop and you don't pay attention and you're in the shower and someone can come to take your power turn module, that's probably a little less likely, I'm thinking. But uh, but they're clearly sounding an alarm. And I'll be very curious. I didn't hear back from any of the other truck makers yesterday, but I, I'm going to pursue it today. I, I, I'd be very surprised if this is isolated to Daimler. Yeah, I would be. I would be too, unless they've got the the, the golden chip somehow. Uh, but, but these chips are not. So when they pull these control modules, if they're harvesting them for the chips, which I guess we're kind of guessing that that's what they're doing, right? They're yes. not. Those chips can be used in anything, right? They don't need to be necessarily stolen and then used within a truck for another powertrain, do they? 
Uh, no, I don't think so. I think if you can get the chips and reprogram them, because, you know, the, the companies themselves have done that. Uh, you know, obviously they move chips around yeah. to the vehicles that they want to finish and sell. And there's some reprogramming involved there. But I'm not an expert in this, and so I don't want to speak too much to it. Right. I, I think, though, that there is a lot of flexibility in terms of what you could do with these uh, you know, source material, if you will. And, and I feel like, you know, we don't know all the answers there. And again, at 175 trucks out of, you know, a couple hundred thousand, you're not talking about anything too big. It's just interesting to me that Daimler would say, you know, we're going after this. This is a big deal to us. And we're going to work with law enforcement. And we want you to tell us if you think you've, uh, you know, taken in a, 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 a module that you know doesn't belong with the VIN that it was assigned to, and things like that. So, so there's a number of things they're doing, and and one of the things they're doing this is attracting attention to it. Now, Alan, now that we've identified, the, 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 it kind of reminds me how people would steal out of air conditioning units for the copper, or when we'd have issues where the tags would be stolen from trailers and trucking. Um, what are kind of the next steps? Does Daimler, other than working with law enforcement and kind of getting the, the, the word out, uh, are there any proactive things or anything you've uh, read that can kind of prevent your <laughs> prevent yourself from getting truck truck jacked, you know, ship, yeah. your chip stolen? Yeah, well, what, one of the things, uh, Thomas, that... <laughs> One of the things that they're talking about uh, doing is is you know essentially uh, securing the ID on your uh, on your on your control module, and, and I think a lot of this can be done probably through your TMS system and things like that. And, and basically, sort of like uh, what what do we have on our uh, a lot of our systems now? We have like a double identification uh, sort of thing. So there are things that the, the truckers can do themselves, or presumably their back office can do for them to to protect. And I think that's one of the goals. The other goal is to you know sort of alert all the service places that Daimler has, and that's 500 and some service facilities, to, to be on the lookout essentially for something that doesn't belong. And if it doesn't belong, tell Daimler and tell your local law enforcement, that kind of thing. So I think the idea is just cast a wide net and hopefully, you know, uh, cut down on this, on this uh, issue. Yeah, it, it's, it's interesting. I mean, how, do you have any idea how what these things are worth? Yes, um, about fourteen hundred dollars new, but uh, on the black market, obviously a good deal more because uh, again, it's like if I went in and, and I keep comparing it to airbags. But if I went in and had somebody's airbags, I could probably get more in the black market for them than I could if they were new. So a new powertrain uh, control module from from Daimler, the one that they specifically refer to, is about fourteen hundred dollars. Um, but again, more on the black market. Yeah, I would. Yeah, I mean, I'm just trying to think of the motivation of why to go uh, so public with only 175, right? Other than maybe you suspect it's much bigger, or speaking with law enforcement, trying to head off something where you're in a situation, you've got owner operators, you got truck drivers not making a ton of money right now and, and getting hurt, and uh, selling something for two grand on the black market rather than taking a load that puts you in the red. Um, you know, <laughs> yeah, I, I, just I saying. Right? Michael, I, think right. I, I can extrapolate the rest of that thought, right? <laughs> well, one of the, you know, one of the things that Daimler did say is that you know the people who get hurt are the drivers. They're the ones yeah. who basically are, are stranded and you know end up with a, a really large, uh, a really large asset they can't use. And so I, I think that the yep. number is probably less important than the fact that they are trying to staunch this from happening more. Um, you know, but again, you know, it's just it, it sort of makes sense that this would go on now since you've got this chip thing and, and obviously we have more demand than we can fill. And, uh, you know, I couldn't tell you exactly where these chips are going or what they're being used for, but uh, but clearly they are a commodity in some demand. And we know that. Yeah, well, coordinated efforts can spread really, really quickly, and getting in front of it and, and pretending like there's not an issue there is is foolhardy, right? I mean, when I was in transportation and in warehousing, it was always, uh, if you don't think that you have a theft problem, you've got a big theft problem, right? And if you think you've got one, then you've got a small one. You, you've always you've you've always you've always got one going on and heading this off at the at the uh, you know spearhead or the beachfront is always a good idea because this is something that could become big as people understand just how easy it is to steal these things. What about pre, uh, production? Are they speaking anything like that and moving forward, how to protect these things or, or put them in the truck in a way that they can't be harvested so easily? No, I think just the security, you know, the cybersecurity side yeah. of it, uh, basically, you know, rendering them what useless if you pulled it out or something yeah. like that. Yeah, that makes uh, sense. You know, or, and also, I mean, there's so many uh, alerts now that the truck can tell you, you know, 
when something's gone wrong or, or something's not working properly. So again, not being an expert in some of these things, I, I would just say that, that you know, they, they're just raising the flag or sound of the bell or whatever cliche you like uh, for this, I think is what's happening here. I mean, p potentially speaking, would the truck be able to say, help, I'm being yeah, chip-napped? Yeah, it could. Chip-napped. <laughs> yeah, like, I agree. Probably not, Thomas. Alan, you, had not. One of those. You, had one of, you had one of those alarms on your car. Please step <laughs> away from the vehicle. Step away from the vehicle. Please don't steal my chips. Yeah, well, you know RoboCop was based here in Detroit, right? So, yes. you know, there was, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome stuff. Hey, Alan, uh, you can catch all of Alan's stuff on, on, on FreightWaves.com uh, and uh, right here on FreightWaves Now, man. Very interesting stuff. Thank you so much, Alan. You have a wonderful rest of your day, my friend. All right, guys. You too. Take care. All right. Peace. Interesting stuff, man. People, criminals always find a way. It's all they? about the chips. It, it's all about not the chips. Not Frito-Lay. No, nobody's, nobody's stealing the salsa. They're stealing the chips, right? <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable stuff. Hey.